It's Bale against Matt Turner. He scored some very important goals in his time. Andy Buckley, BBC Talk Sport out of England. We spoke to uh, at the conclusion of the Welsh versus United States game, three games then, and I started by saying, look, I just think that's the best game that we've been watching, that one. Uh, first time that Wales have been at this World Cup since 1958, mate. Uh, yeah, it was actually. Good recovery, second half from Wales, uh, and the USA looked decent. Uh, but uh, no great surprises, I don't think, from either side. I think they've got limitations. Uh, and uh, it was a great uh, occasion for Wales, as you say, first time in the World Cup since 1958. So a lot of history there. And, um, yeah, they did this, um, themselves proud in the second half when they'd made one or two tweaks. But an entertaining game uh, and uh, not the best of the day. I must disagree there. I think the England Iran game was... Uh, the exceptional performance of the day uh, by England, but uh, for, for day two of the tournament, I thought it was uh, quite encouraging. Oh, well, that's what we love about football. We can sit here, we can argue, we can debate, we can we can we can talk about it. And in the end, the only thing that really is real is the scoreline. Uh, these two teams, I mean, England face these teams, USA and Wales. You would expect England to get out of this group, so it would probably be one of the two others, given what we saw with Iran today. Uh, a 6-2, I know they're ranked 20th in the world, but they got well beat, well beat. Yeah, they were poor. They were awful, really, Iran. Uh, disappointed. I thought they would be better than that. Um, so, so I think it's up for grabs, really, between uh, Wales and the USA. I mean, uh, I, I was watching the game tonight on television, and one of the pundits said, oh, Gareth Bale looked a little bit tired. Do you think they might rest him for the next game against Iran? And then this pundit said, got shot down in flames, quite rightly as well, because you don't rest Bale for the Iran game. If anything, you rest him, you try and beat Iran and get through. And if he needs a rest, rest him for the England game. Mm. I know England mm. and Wales has got that special rivalry. But that's the key game, really, for Wales, the Iran game, because it could come down to what happens against Iran for both Wales and the USA to determine who goes through with England. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, and you know, it, um, it 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 normally comes down to around about four points. Normally, gets you through, or then you know, goal difference doesn't it? That's what we're playing with at the time. But you exactly. know, you, 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 you know, you can't deny an England team that put six goals on anyone at any World Cup. No, no, it was uh, heartening to see England uh, come out of the trap so quickly um, on all the big calls. Gareth Southgate got it right. Um, he, uh, Saka played ahead of Foden. But he got away with that one because Saka produced two goals. Then Foden came on and looked quite lively uh, as a substitute. The substitutes worked. Callum Wilson unselfishly set up Jack Grealish as well. Marcus Rashford scored what within 49 seconds of coming off the bench. So uh, Harry Maguire concussed. Uh, I think Kane went off with a bit of an ankle injury as well. But uh, on so many levels, it was just uh, a great start to the World Cup. For uh, for England, I mean, but we we had the old VAR controversy again, didn't we? With Harry Maguire who gets wrestled to the ground, no penalty, and then John Stones. There was no consistency there when he conceded that penalty late on, and that was the only sort of downside, I suppose, for England: the fact that they let two goals in when it, from a game that they won comfortably. Andy Buckley, BBC Talk Sport, with us out of the UK. We're looking at the three games today: uh, Senegal, Netherlands, and no Mane for Senegal. These are the African champions again. I was really disappointed. I expected more from them. I mean, the Netherlands huffed and puffed a bit, but I mean, you know, they've been really consistent in their build-up probably for the last two years. Deserved the win, even if it was late? Yeah, they did. They did, but again, nothing special from either side. Uh, and of course, special interest in England in that uh, particular group because it could be Senegal or the Dutch that England play in the last 16. So uh, I was watching that one with particular interest, but I agree with you. I think... Uh, Senegal were disappointing uh, and missing Mane. Any team would miss him. But I don't think the Dutch have uh, got anything up front, really, that's going to scare the best of the world. Um, so, uh, again, I, I wouldn't be I'd be surprised if they recapture the, the glory days of uh, past Dutch teams. Of course, never won the World Cup, but have gone close so many Three times. times yeah. One of the most uh, encouraging things for me, though, from... Uh, today was the amount of time that was added on. Unbelievable. I know it was right in that England game that we had 14 minutes in the first half because of the concussion to the Iranian goalkeeper. Well, then it got 10 minutes in the second half uh, of that game. And then tonight, was it another, was it nine minutes? No, yeah, no it actually went over to 10 in the end, yeah. Yeah, nine minutes. Now, I think, bring it on as far as I'm concerned, because I'm fed up of watching football matches, whether it's live in the flesh 
or on television and being shortchanged because of the time wasted, the amount of time the ball spends out of play. You know, if you add it up, I think that, that this analysis has been done. It's a ridiculously low number of minutes that the ball actually is in play. So fair play to FIFA. I've never thought I would utter those words uh, in this World Cup, but fair play to them for selling the referees, look, just add on minutes and and for as an entertainment spectacle first class as far as I'm concerned so all of a sudden you're also saying Fergie time is real there you go it's out loud you've said it <laughs> yeah Fergie time is real yeah yeah Sergio Aguero knows that obviously. yeah exactly uh, he wasn't the only one <laughs> but then look you know it's it's like you know we're watching rugby tests over the weekend just to you know, digress for a second here and you know honestly the you know, you watch the women's game where the ball seems to be in action the whole time. The men's game is so stop, start, injury, sit down, line out, wander over, have a committee meeting, scrum, reset. And by the time you actually, if you add up the amount of minutes in a game, you probably get 18 out of the full 80. Uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in favour of this. You know, when the ball's dead or if it goes out, the clock should just automatically stop. I mean, it should actually be something the referee's not, yeah. e- not even actually in control of and doesn't have to actually look at his own watch. Somebody should be sitting there yeah. going, stop, pause, as soon as it's back in play, play again. And then we'd actually get 90 minutes. Exactly, I couldn't agree more. I think it's the product, it's entertainment, um, and they've got to uh, get wise to that fact. Uh, and I, 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 like you, uh, when when you see a stoppage in rugby union and you think the clock is still ticking, mm. it, it really does, it does irritate me. And you see it still ticking, still ticking, still ticking. Oh, eventually it stops. And then there could be a contentious issue that decides a try or something that decides a game, and suddenly you run out of the time. And you're thinking, well, if they... The, the the guy who the timekeeper had actually got it correct, you know, we wouldn't be resorting to this uh, lottery at the end of a match. So yeah, and I couldn't agree more. It's just in this day and age, please get it right. It's not difficult, which is why going back to the World Cup, I'm just so glad. I mean, I'm probably knocking a few TV schedules out. The fact that these games are lasting so long, but uh, you know, it it, it just uh, and it also meant a lot. Lot of people obviously missed a bit more work this afternoon in England Same, yeah. because uh, a lot a lot of places stopped for the game today. So uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, that has been a, a, a definite positive. A bizarre fourth game today, New Zealand time. It kicks off 11 p.m. our place, so it's probably what about 10 in the morning, I think, for you. Argentina versus Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And look, you can't yeah, look at this World Cup without looking at the sports washing that's gone on. We know, you know, how you know, Qatar got it under very dubious circumstances. Saudi Arabia going around the world at the moment throwing money at everything, so to try and sort of paper over what goes on in that in that country. We saw Iran today, those footballers didn't sing the national anthem. They've been seriously criticised by, by some of the protesters back home that they're actually in the pay of the government and then apparently the government in, in Iran then switched off the cameras during that national anthem so that you couldn't see the Iranian players ignoring it. I mean there is politics all over sport Andy we've been speaking about this for months mate. Yeah I know we have yeah it happens in the Olympics as well doesn't it um, you know uh, I think well, I was in China for the Olympic Games at the start of the year and I think uh, the Americans uh, what was some some the Ukrainian national anthem was on or something and Russia didn't show it they didn't want to show it something like that so it happens all the time one of the uh, amusing little footnotes to that england game and i saw it myself actually said to my wife i said i can't believe just what happened england is singing the national anthem uh, loud and proud and mason mount the chelsea player actually said uh, god save the queen, queen. Uh, which comes which is automatic and there's an awful lot of people who said to me i can't get my head around it's god save the king and that's a tribute to our late lovely yes. queen because yes. uh uh, it, but it just it's ingrained in our kind of psyche you sing God Save the Queen and fair play to him yep. he belted it out there God Save the Queen and uh, it's it's something we're going to have to get used to Finally the fans I mean there were problems with the England fans apparently the FIFA app failed I mean there's always somebody in the IT department who's asleep during these tournaments isn't there right and and I'm not sure that we're actually you know the, the, the crowd's leaving but when you know, Ecuador played Qatar it might be the worst ever World Cups for, for actual physical crowds at stadiums Oh yeah, I know. Uh, um, was, was it was Senegal attendance was forty five thousand in a sixty eight thousand capacity or something? It was, uh, it, you know, uh, I think they gave the official attendance as higher than it actually was the capacity, which is ridiculous. But yeah, um, fans getting into stadiums um, is and it, which is really when you think that these stadiums were built for this World Cup. And, and the technology that we've got these days, it's not difficult, is it? 
Um, and yet they just can't do it. You know, I go to football every week. I watch Manchester City. I've never had a physical ticket in my hand for quite a few years now because all you do is you just swipe your phone That's as your you're phone. going in. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's unbelievable, really. As long as you don't lose your phone, you're all right. If you lose your phone, you're not <laughs> Well, that's a life uh, rule, isn't it, mate? <laughs> that's life. That, well, that's, that, that is your life. Yeah, you go out now, don't you? You just have to put some ch loose change in your pocket and think, right, I'll get that and take some change to the pub. And now you just, yeah. you can drink away to your heart's content and just swipe your card. You imagine, you, you, you just it. imagine the sheer panic that runs through you when you don't really, where's, where's my phone? Yeah, honestly, mate, your life stops at that. Where the hell's my phone got? Right, doesn't it? It's actually it's yeah. it's wicked and it's weird. But we are be honestly yeah. the anxiety that comes when all of a sudden you don't know where that thing is. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. I went for a cycle ride with my wife a few weeks ago, and uh, she lost her phone. She left it on a park bench, and, and panic. Oh, utter panic. It just, uh, uh, you know, and then she, we're ringing it and uh, somebody had picked it up and we'd go around to the house and collect it and everything. But her day was, her life had been ruined in that moment. Uh, yeah, my laptop and my phone mean as much to me as uh, my wife and my grandkids.